Amanda. Hi, Lauren. How are I'm you? So you're here. Yeah, I'm so excited to be here. I'm so excited to chat and so excited to have this conversation for everybody. Yes, awesome. Uh, thank you so much for joining me tonight. Um, as we're getting started and before we formally introduce Amanda to this evening's live, um, if you're with us, if you joined us tonight, say hi in the chat. Give us some good news. It seems like a good news kind of day. It just started pouring here. I'd love to hear some good news. Um, and let us know we're here. You're here. We'd like to be, you know, as interactive as possible. Tammy says, hi, ladies. Hi, Tammy. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> Jacob, welcome. Procrastinating is my favorite. Look, I love it too, until I don't. But mostly I do. We're going to talk about that. Um, Samantha, I've been wanting to journal, but haven't found the perfect journal. <laughs> yes. That's the thing. Oh, that feeling. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we're so uh, glad to have so many people joining us. Um, Kishore, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. Please correct me if I'm not. Um, and Raba, uh, yoga, flexibility, and gymnastics group. I don't know what that means, but. I'm going to read comments before I put them up for the rest of the live. So thanks for that. <laughs> um, maybe that was the good news. Maybe that was good news. Did I miss, did I misunderstand? Maybe that was the good news. If that was the good news, great. If you're asking me to join a yoga flexibility and gymnastics group, no, thank you. <laughs> yeah. It sounds like um, a great day to get all three in one day. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so here we are. I've been on this kick with procrastination. It's my new gig. It's my new jam. Um, and, uh, and we're already getting comments about journaling. It's such like a hot topic when they're like, for me, it like raises my, my blood, you know, <laughs> several blank books, but my abil ability to focus prohibits me. Oh, I bet you're going to have some, uh, some good advice on that. Um, so and we've got Edward with us as well. Thanks for putting your name in there. Sometimes if you're not like quite linked up to LinkedIn, you come in as, as LinkedIn user. Um, awesome. So Amanda, I talk about procrastination from um, a little bit of an action standpoint and um, a little bit of a like a being standpoint, right? Like we can do all the things, but if we're being like negative about it or defeatist about it, um, or, you know, I, I always like the, um, uh, the quote, if you think you can't, you're, if you think you can, or you cannot, you're correct. You're right. I think it was, um, uh, Ford who said that. Hi, Katie. Thanks for being here. Um, and so, uh, so, you know, when I work with people, I'm working with them to get out of these like limiting beliefs and to stop procrastinating, figuring out who they want to be when they grow up. You take a different approach. And so tell us just like, who are you? What should we know about you? And, and then we'll start diving into procrastination, journaling and procrastination and all of it. Yeah, thanks for asking. So I am a journaling coach. I work with clients to help them design lives they don't need vacations from or they don't want vacations from. And I help entrepreneurs in particular journal their way to success on their own terms. I believe that there is no wrong way to journal and that there are so many right ways to journal that everyone who wants a path forward can find one. And that's what I do. I help people find their path forward. It's so fun and so rewarding and so exciting to watch the magic happen. Okay. So I know you're not like super deep into this business yet. Like you, I mean, you've been a journaler and teaching people how to journal forever, but like you're just sort of formalized your first group program. That was an amazing elevator speech. Thank you. That was really great. And like so clear about what you do. Um, and so I would love to hear, like, how did you come about not only being a journaler, but realizing that this was a, an untapped area? I never know whether to say niche or niche. I know niche is like the proper way. It sounds fancier, but I That's feel a like. weird word. Yeah. So like I've used audience or focus area. None of it sounds right. Anyway, 
how did you figure out that you like to journal? And then how did you figure out that like other people needed coaching and guidance on that? Yeah. So I've been journaling since I was an angsty teenager. I don't remember exactly how old I was, 14, 15, 16. Um, I just remember having a really hard day and none of my friends could come to the phone. And I picked up a notebook, I picked up a pencil and I started writing. And I had always loved to write. I wrote stories. I wrote happily for school. But it was the first time that I associated writing with how I felt. Because when I was done writing, I felt lighter. I felt better and I felt like it was worth picking up my pen again the next night and the next night. And over time, I just developed this practice of keeping a journal. And at first it was very historical. Today, I was up at six o'clock and I had toast for breakfast and I went to school and here are the people I talked to and here are the people who I avoided in the hallways. And, you know, it was initially a play by play of what my life was like. But it also gave me an opportunity to figure out who I was and who I wanted to be and how I could be that. And so journaling has played a pivotal role in my life on a number of occasions. And it really, on multiple occasions, changed the trajectory of my life. I tell the story often, you might have heard it, of how I turned to gratitude journaling the day my then husband came home and said, oh, I've decided I'd be happier not being married to you. Like, where do you go from there, right? And so I thought, in this moment, I have a choice to make. I can either allow myself to spiral into negativity or I could reach out and grab hold of every good thing that came my way. And that's what I did. I picked up my journal, I picked up my pen, and I forced myself to write what I was grateful for. And it was really hard because I didn't feel grateful for very much. Mm. But I came up with eight things. And I thought if I can be grateful for eight things on the hardest day of my life, I'm going to be okay. My life is pretty good. So I like to think that that decision really set me off on a trajectory to figure out, again, in this new phase of my life, who I was, who I wanted to be, how I wanted to show up, and where I wanted to show up. And it really set me off on a course of what else can journaling do for me? Uh, so I found I can use journaling to set intentions for how I show up and where I show up. I can use journaling to help me track my progress toward goals, to help me get really clear on what I want, to solve problems, to remember all the things that I think I can store in my brain, but really I can't if I want to ever retrieve them. Um, so the more ways I find I can use my journal, the more I try to figure out how I can use my journal. But helping other people was really an accident because all of my life I had journaled, I hadn't really talked about it because I didn't know how to bring it up. It seemed like a weird thing. Like, hey, Lauren, guess what? I journaled today. Like, <laughs> that's weird, super weird. And the last thing I ever would have expected to do um, was journal with other people because I always thought it was a solitary activity and I would never have called you up and be like, hey, Lauren, bring your deck of cards over. We'll sit at my table and we'll play solitaire together. Yeah, that would be weird, right? Yes, so it's weird. like parallel play. <laughs> yes. But somehow there is this level of magic when we journal with other people. Um, and so I just started showing up on LinkedIn last year and I was doing one of those 30 day programs. I needed something to write about. And I thought, you know, I could probably write about journaling for a week. That'll buy me some time to figure out what I really want to talk about. And it resonated with people and no one else was really talking about journaling. And it's funny because my first LinkedIn phone call that I had was hilarious. It was a guy from Chicago who does finance and I was pretty sure he was going to try to sell me something. And I picked up the phone and the first thing he said was, can you tell me everything about how you journal? I've never heard anyone describe journaling the way you describe journaling. Yeah. And I was like, sure, like I'm happy to, but man, it's like it's just journaling. And then a couple of days later, I talked to somebody else and he was like, hey, can you tell me everything you know about journaling? Because I've never heard anyone talk about journaling the way you've talked about journaling. And I was like, again, I'm happy to. And then a third person. And these are smart, smart people from different places in the world. And I thought, OK, if these very smart people that journaling is not intuitive to them, then it might not be intuitive for everybody. And mm -hmm. so I started really trying to demystify it for people. And I love help, helping people understand journaling doesn't have to look like this. It could look like this, or it could look like this, or it could look like this, or it could look like this. Mm -hmm. And however it works for you and you get what you need from it, you are doing it right. 
That's the most exciting part for me. Yeah, I still want to do it right. Like I it's I hear you say that. <laughs> and um I so I attended one of your journaling sessions when you did a sample group thing and and I kind of came into it like go ahead teach me to journal, yeah. <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> and I'm a I'm a lifelong sporadic journaler. Like I have the first five pages of a bunch of notebooks um, filled out. And also I write now more than I've ever written just based on being on LinkedIn, being on Instagram, writing articles. So like I'm writing a book. So like all of this stuff is uh, coming naturally to me. And then I sit in front of a blank piece of paper and I'm like, uh, so what I liked in your session was um, that you were like, there's no wrong way. And then you list off a bunch of ways, including typing. And one of my hesitations in journaling is that I, I write like a six-year-old. Like somehow, my brother and I both, we, we both don't have nice handwriting. We both write in all caps when we have to handwrite stuff so that it's legible. I like very occasionally will take notes in a notebook and then I go back and I'm like, I don't know what that says. Um, and it's not like fancy doctor writing. It's It really is like childish, like, you know, give me a crayon, I'll grip it in my whole fist kind of writing. And alternatively, I type like 100 words per minute. So I still think faster than that, but I type almost as fast as I think. And you mentioning that out loud, that it's okay to type a journal when all you hear when you hear people talk about journaling is like, it has to be a hand on paper, it does something different with the brain. And then you're just giving me like that little bit of permission. I've just been writing more, like I think of something and I open a Word document and I just have been writing. I'm not, I don't have a daily practice yet. And I do hope to, um, which is like the kiss of death to say, I hope to. That's like saying you, you, you want to want to. Um, but it really opened something up for me to be in community with people who were also journaling. Yeah. 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 Well, so. Journaling is one of those things that I think we get an idea in our head of what it's supposed to look like. Because yeah. I talk to people all the time who say things like, I've tried journaling, it doesn't work for me. Mm -hmm. And my question is always, well, what have you tried? And they tell me, and I was like, well, why do you want to journal? And they say, well, I want to journal because of X, Y, Z. But if you're journaling for A, B, and C, that will never get you to X, Y, and Z. So right. I always love to start with what do you want to get out of it? Because there are so many ways to go about it. You can pair, you can reverse engineer it, right? Figure mm -hmm. out what you want to get, pair a journaling technique or two or three or six that'll help you get there, that's going to be much more effective than following somebody's template. Because you can find templates all over the place and people will tell you this is the right way to journal and I think they're full of baloney. If somebody mm -hmm. ever tries to insist there's one right way to do it, like go running really, really fast and far away from them because it's not true. There's There are so many ways that work, but what's going to work for you is going to depend on what you're looking to do. Yeah. Um, we've got a couple of comments coming in. Um, journaling is profoundly therapeutic. It provides just the right distance from your mind to see it without drowning in it. I recommend it to all my clients. Amanda's work is very important. It's awesome. Yeah. I always say there's just enough space between my brain and the page to get the perspective I need. Mm. Yeah. Every time. And Jason's calling you the queen of journaling. And Jacob is in my camp with the I hope to. Yeah. I, I talk, I've been talking a lot recently about like, I'm, I'm hitting a next stage in my business, in my life. You know, I spent um, uh, 20 years in corporate HR and fill in the blank, a whole bunch of different departments, but, um, uh, and being a workaholic. And I spent a couple of years undoing that, figuring out what I wanted to be when I grew up. And it was my side gig which was coaching. So I took that full time and I got my certification. So I had the street cred and I have been building the business for a year. And um, I'm at this new phase where I'm like, is it, is it just allowed to be fun like this? Right. And then I think of doing something new 
like building a journaling practice or um, building like a next program in my business. Um, I'm a I'm a certified laughter yoga leader. I don't know if you knew that about me, but uh -huh. I have not built a program yet around it. And like, I'm really excited to, and everyone I tell is like, oh, I would totally do that with you. Um, but I, I am in this comfort zone where I'm like, I'll just stay here and just keep doing this. Cause it's like first time in my life where I haven't been fighting in some sort of uphill battle. Yeah. <laughs> um, and yet I'm like, I'm interested in journaling. Um, and when I write things down, I was working yesterday on, uh, I've no, I don't know if you've ever heard of the wheel of life mm -hmm. exercise. It's a, for those who don't know, it's a, you take a wheel, some of them come labeled, some of them come unlabeled, and you just decide different areas of your life that you want to focus on. You rate where you are now. Oh, you have one in front of you. Like you did it this week too. Yeah. Um, and I was working on that this week with a, with another coach and, writing things down. And as I'm writing, I'm like, all this new stuff is coming out of my head and I can read most of it, which is great because I hand wrote it. <laughs> um, but, uh, and yet, like, I still am like, I will start a journaling, journaling practice. I, you know, like I looked at a couple of apps and I've like looked at how I could organize it in my OneDrive and, um, and I procrastinate. <laughs> so, um, uh, so what, how do you, well, how do you procrastinate? I would love to know how you procrastinate because I don't know anybody who's like, oh, I don't. I'm I'm better than you. It's cool. Well, it depends on what I'm procrastinating about. I'm really good at procrastinating uh, going to bed uh, by being on my phone. Mm -mm. I'm super great at procrastinating um, taking care of things around the house by being on LinkedIn, doing very important things on my computer. I'm busy right now doing all the important stuff. <laughs> Um, and for me, it's the do, 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 do that looks like I'm busy with super important, but is really, I don't want to have to stop because then I have to think about that thing that I don't want to have to do. So if I yeah. just keep in motion long enough, then it won't catch up to me, but it always does. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Eventually we do the thing and then we do it like we scurry to do it yeah. and, and get it done. Um, we've got a comment from Rachel. I used to teach yoga and my least favorite part about it was that I couldn't make jokes because it would break the Zen vibes, but I would love to see a laughter yoga class. That's great. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm hoping to, I'm hoping to, hoping to, Ooh, <laughs> let's see what the fall brings. <laughs> I, you know, something I've been procrastinating has been taking time off and, um, and so I am taking a full week off and I, I, I booked a hotel. I'm coming to New York, New Jersey area. Amanda and I are going to meet in person. So exciting. Um, and, uh, and I still had all of my client appointments open and nobody, none of my clients make appointments a whole month in advance. It's a month away. Um, oh, Rachel says she'll be there. Okay, cool. We'll let you know. Um, so, uh, so I, I booked the hotel for five nights and, um, I'm seeing, I know I'm seeing family. I know I'm meeting you. I'm seeing a couple of other LinkedIn friends, you know, from different parts of the Tri-State area. Um, and I still had my, my appointments open and I thought like, I'll do both. And then I was like, what would you say to your clients? <laughs> you know, like my clients aren't going to be like, you're taking a week off. I'm leaving. <laughs> but I've been used to a career of urgency and that's not how my life is anymore. That's not how my career is anymore. Um, and I decided I wasn't going to take any meetings that weren't just like fun meetups. And so I'm really excited. My, um, my parents are moving to a new home and so I'm going to get to see that and, you know, get to just see friends and just like be. And I'm super glad that I stopped procrastinating like what I was going to make that week. Yeah. Yeah. A friend of mine introduced me last year to work sabbaticals. He works for himself. He says every six weeks, every seventh week, he works six weeks, then takes a sabbatical week. 
And I asked him, I said, how do you do that? And he's like, I just put it on the calendar. And he does it at the beginning of the year, just plops it in the calendar. He blocks the time off and he doesn't schedule anything else. And I thought it was genius. Um, So this year I ended up, I'm still at my nine to five, but I ended up with four weeks of vacation to take between January and June. So I scheduled nearly four weeks of vacation and it was glorious and beautiful. And I thought, oh my goodness, this is the life I want to lead. This is how I want to, this is how I want my life to be. I want Mm -hmm. to be able to have this time and this flexibility and to really make my life what it is. And that, I think, for me, was a big nudge to stop procrastinating, start moving things forward, start, you know, start really working on your business so you can lead this life you want. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. So um, how does journaling help you with procrastination? Yeah. Um, So journaling helps me get really clear on what's going on up here. Um, There, (laughs) I always say I have two speeds. They are rabbit and stop. And stop usually means like asleep. I'm really great at falling asleep on the couch. Um, But when I journal, that slows me down long enough for my thoughts and my brain to sync up. Um, That's when I do my best thinking, when I have a pen in hand. So I always handwrite because that's what works best for me. Mm. Um, Journaling is one of the very few things I still do by hand. Um, But I love it because it gives me an opportunity to really examine what's going on in here and what's going on in here. And I do a lot of talking about my feelings when it's a hard thing. When I I know I need to do something and I just don't want to. I love to use my journaling to unpack it. What is going on? Why am why am I stuck? Where am I stuck? What is this really about? Because I always figure out it's not the thing I think it is. Um, it's not I'm I'm avoiding this big thing because it's hard. Usually it's I'm avoiding this thing because I'm afraid that I'm going to not do it perfectly. And it's better to fail by not trying than to try and fail. Oh, perfection. (laughs) My old friend, perfection. Yeah. Yeah. That's where a lot of my fear comes from. It's like, I want it to roll out perfectly. I want it to, um, I just launched Procrastinators Power Hour, which is um, two hours a week where we get together, we work, we co-work virtually, uh, we goal set at the beginning, then we go on mute and work. And then we come back at the end and we celebrate. And I didn't want to launch it until I had like people secured to come to it. Cause I had this, like, nobody's going to come to my birthday party fear, which by the way has never happened to me, but you know, that's the big fear. Um, and, uh, and so far I have like eight or nine people in there, which is awesome. Um, and uh, not everyone comes every time. Today, there were just two of us, but we have the company, you know, but I wanted it to be perfect and I wanted the marketing to be better and I wanted the whatever, you know, all the things that you think of that are like not good enough. And I finally just like did it and it's out there and I'm sending emails about it and um, and it's not perfect, but perfect is also kind of boring. And if it was perfect, then people would be like, oh, I'm. I don't know if I'm good enough to go to this procrastinator's power hour because it's for perfect people. Um, So it's been really fun to build and like kind of not put all of my hopes and dreams into it and just like see what happens. And, um, and I'm getting a ton of work done with like the focused hours and having the accountability of coworkers with me. Yeah. I'd love that for you. Yeah. Thanks. Um, so I know you just started a group program and that you also do one-on-one stuff. Can you tell everyone like a little bit about what you do, what they can do with you and how to get in touch? Yeah. So I have a, I just started this eight week journaling for entrepreneurship program. I call it better you better business. And this is eight weeks of, uh, on the surface, it looks like a journaling group. That's what it is on the surface. But in this group, we are 
identifying opportunities for growth and change. We are building foundational habits, not just journaling as the foundational habit, but journaling to support the other habits we need to, to make those changes we want. We take goals, we work them into an action plan, and we start moving forward. We overcome obstacles and limiting beliefs and mindset blocks. And then, and I think this part is so important, we recognize and celebrate our accomplishments because people, um, people like me who set goals here and we're happy to celebrate here miss all the fun along the way because it's easy. This thing I did, you know, here it was like expected. It was no big deal, right? But it was a big deal and I'm the one who did it. And the more I can celebrate those baby steps, the more fun it is to keep working toward my goals and the easier it feels when I get there, that it was a more joyful process. Um, and then we also uh, are learning to use our journals as our accountability partners. So we don't need necessarily anybody checking up on us to make sure we've done the thing because we can do that for ourselves. So that's our eight week program. We've just launched it. I'm going to be running another round of it starting the beginning of October. I've already got uh, a couple of people on the wait list. So if folks are interested in that. Um, I'd love for them to book a call with me and we can talk about how they can get on the wait list as well. But then I also work on with people one on one to build their journalers toolbox because I'm a firm believer that just like having a well stocked toolbox at home with a hammer and wrenches and screwdrivers and all the tools helps you be able to get all your home fix it jobs done. Having a well stocked journalers toolbox, knowing what tools you have, when and how to use them helps you take care of all your needs and be able to get what you need out of your journaling practice. And again, journal your way to a life you don't want a vacation from. Um, so people can find me every day on LinkedIn. Usually I'm there by 8 a.m. Um, you can find me at uh, uh, Amanda Jane Stern. Jane has a Y in it. Apparently there's a lot more Amanda Stearns than my parents ever realized there were. <laughs> uh, I'm friends with several of them on LinkedIn. It's very funny. We uh, joke about who, you know, how will we know who is who if Amanda Stern books a call with Amanda Stern? <laughs> um, so you can also, I know, right? Um, we, you can also find me at goodthingscometothosewhojournal.com. Awesome. Uh, you said two things during that that really struck me. One was using a journal for celebration. Um, and uh, I imagine that your client base is similar to mine in that it's probably a bunch of high achiever perfectionists who like can't get journaling right. So they're coming to you to make it right. Right. And um, uh, I know for me, I was always unwilling to celebrate until the very end. Right. Like, well, I didn't do the thing yet. I'm doing the things to do the thing, but I don't get to celebrate until the whole big thing is done. And I have learned over the years and now I work with my clients on it. And it's actually when I meet with my coach, it's the first thing we talk about is what what are we celebrating? And it could be anything from like, I have a new client to like, I took the afternoon off, yeah. right? Like it can really, celebrating can really be anything. And we deserve to get credit for the work we do along the way. I just love that. I love that you said that. And I love that that can be part of a journaling practice. Um, and the other thing that came up for me while you were talking was this uh, idea of a toolbox, right? Like you got a hammer, you got a wrench, I don't know, there are other tools, screwdrivers one, right? Maybe if that was a category in a game I was playing, I might lose yeah. the round. Um, <laughs> but um, when you talk about journaling, I picture you having one notebook till it's full and moving on. But do you have several journals? Yeah, so this is my main journal. Most of my stuff goes in here. My daily morning journaling goes in here. My journaling I'm doing for my group goes in here. Uh, my Sunday accountability journaling goes in here. Um, most everything is in here. I also keep this one. This is, um, and I don't endorse journals very often or recommend them. This one I love. It's the one line a day journal and there's lots of variations. What I love about it is it has space for five years worth of journaling. And this is all the space it gives you. So for people who want to start a practice, but you're intimidated by the thought of a whole page, these are great because this is all you can write. Um, you write today, write tomorrow, make it to the end of the book. 
then you've got next year, you know, five years worth of wow. one book. And that's what I love about it. So I started using this one in April, I think. And I'm using it at night to capture the high points of my day, just like the greatest hits. And I'm really excited to get five years worth of the best moments of my life in one place. I think this is that really is fun. Very cool. So this is my wind down practice. Um, I have I have other books that I pull out for different things. Like sometimes I'll do some health journaling and tracking. Um, any kind of data I'm looking to collect, I will pull out into a separate volume. Um, I've got a workout log. I, I think of that as a form of journaling. And it makes me laugh because there are so many um, ways people journal that they don't realize are actually journaling. Mm -hmm. And lots of people I talk to who are like, I will never journal. But, you know, I organize my day and I plan my day and I sketch notes and I write ideas and I just, you know, jot, jot down things as I think of them. And I just, you know, I, I do some writing and I'm like, dude, those are all journaling. If you were doing like any what I said at the beginning of our conversation, yeah, if you were <laughs> I don't doing journal any of, those, any of those kind of things, if you are posting regularly on LinkedIn, right? That's a form of journaling. I always say keep a backup and consider having a place that's just for your eyes only. Mm. Um, but I go through about four of these a year. So I, I do fill it up until it's done. Um, but there's no right way to do it. I know people who keep a different journal for every topic. I don't because then I would get caught up in all the stuff and mm -hmm. then I wouldn't do any actual journaling because I would be busy with all the stuff. I don't bullet journal because that would be um, an invitation to procrastination for me. I can't do it until the layout is perfect and I need more stickers and more colors and more whatever. And then I wouldn't do any actual journaling. So that wouldn't, you know, wouldn't be effective for me, but lots yeah. of people do it and love it. I, um, bullet journaling scares me because I feel like I would need to become like a certified bullet journaler in order to get that right. Like that to me feels like the type of journaling that you have to get right. <laughs> so that would not be for me. Um, we once talked about apps, uh, oh. journaling apps. Do you have journaling apps that you like? You know, I've not played around with them, but I can tell you I have clients that use Dailyo that really like that. Um, I have one client in particular who says she likes it because she can track her mood and it will nudge her three times a day to come in um, and track and just jot down notes. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of people I hear like day one. Mm -hmm. I think it's called day one or one day. I think it's day one. Um, my teenage daughter for a while was using an app that she liked called the daily bean. Um, she liked it because she could again, track her mood kind of, it was more of a, it's a little more of a tracker than a journal per se, but it, I think there's space for her to write kind of how she's feeling or what she's thinking about. Um, the daily O in one day, day one, I really think it's day one. Um, those are the ones I hear the most often. Mm -hmm. But I think the most important thing is you find something you like that's going to work for you. Um, yeah. Cause everybody's, everybody's different. Um, like when I look for a paper notebook, I want something that has really thinly ruled lines and smooth paper. I want it to lay flat and I want a hard cover and I want it to be less than $10. This one is like eight. Um, but a lot of people I know, and we talked about this on LinkedIn the other day, like, I love my composition notebook, or I love my fancy moleskin, or my lectorm, or or some other kind of fancy notebook. Um, yeah. So I always tell people, find what's going to motivate you to show up and keep doing it. Amazing. Amanda, thank you so much for being here. Um, when this is over, we'll put your link in the comments. We'll put my link to Procrastinator's Power Hour in the comments. If anybody has questions for either one of us, we both check our DMs all the time. We both practically live on LinkedIn and we love it here. And um, we'll let you know if we plan something in uh, the New York, New Jersey, Connecticut area. Um, and thanks so much for being with us. We, we appreciate you and we're glad to have you here and participating. Bye. Bye.